This week in Jamaica now, Tanya Stevens in the line of fire following damning social media posts claiming hypocrisy in the tributes for retired parliamentarian Portia Simpson Miller. Parliament passes controversial Special Operations Zones Bill. The final salute, JFF President Captain Horace Burrell is laid to rest. So who will now take over? Digicel to refund prepaid customers unannounced maintenance fee and traffic ticket amnesty pushed back by a month. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. Recording artist Tanya Stevens is facing intense backlash following comments she made about former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller. Writing on Facebook, Stevens said, Hearing people lament Portia's departure is like seeing people congratulate my rapist for being a good man. She isn't a good person and she knows that. According to Ms. Stevens, besides unqualified and an embarrassing representation who wasn't even of an average intelligence as per her public displays, Simpson Miller was also an awful, apathetic human who perfected the art of pandering to the hypocrisy of Jamaicans. I'm happy to see her back. I'm not alone. Good riddance, Stevens posted. Simpson Miller's supporters would hit back at Tanya Stevens, among them Suzette Parks. I love her as an artist, but I think she crossed the line because even though I didn't want her to be my PM, I love and respect her as a woman who let all women know they can make it in this society. And there were more than 20 tributes to Mrs. Simpson Miller in the House of Representatives during a joint sitting on Tuesday. Prime Minister Andrew Holness lauded her as a defender of the poor and said he would continue that role. Mr. Holness said while he has had disagreements with Mrs. Simpson Miller on her methods, he never questioned her motives. Dr. Peter Phillips, who recently took over as opposition leader and PNP president, said Simpson Miller's rise from humble beginnings was a symbol of Jamaica's capacity to achieve. And Mrs. Simpson Miller said she will forever cherish the opportunity to have served the Jamaican people. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud of my record of representation of the people of Southwest St. Andrew. Yeah. In 1976, I inherited a constituency with poor and inadequate housing, poor or no public infrastructure, poor health care facilities, and limited access to social services. I had to build community leadership and steadily improve the living, living conditions and give hope to the people. I have been an activist MP, and with the support of the people, I have accomplished much. The Senate will soon receive the controversial Special Operations Zones Bill the government is banking on to help in the crime fight. This week, the government and the parliamentary opposition moved from positions that had threatened to divide them on the law to eventually pass the bill with 18 amendments. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck said with the passage of the Zones of Special Operations Bill, the security forces would put gunmen to flight. The new law will give the Prime Minister the power to declare certain areas as Zones of Special Operations so that police and soldiers can search properties without a warrant, among other measures. Telecommunications company Digicel is to refund prepaid customers the unannounced monthly maintenance charge it began imposing on some of them on June 22. The Office of Utilities Regulation, the OUR, is probing the matter. In the meantime, Digicel says as a good gesture, customers charged for the month of June will get back their money. The OUR has demanded that Digicel explain the decision to start charging a prepaid maintenance fee to customers whose monthly spend is under 50 Jamaican dollars. Government, civic, business and sporting leaders on Wednesday paid their last respect to Captain Horace Burrell, the late president of the Jamaica Football Federation. Captain Burrell, who was 67, died from cancer in the United States earlier this month. Former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, Sports Minister Olivia Grange, former Technical Director of the Jamaica National Football Program Renee Simois, and CONCACAF President Victor Montagliani were among those who paid respect to Captain Burrell. Burrell was interred at Upar Camp following a private ceremony. Meanwhile, the border of the JFF is to meet this weekend to determine how to move forward. It could decide to appoint an interim president or call an annual general meeting to elect a new president. The traffic ticket amnesty, which was scheduled to start on July 1, has been pushed back to August 2. The National Security Minister Robert Montague says the delay is to allow more time to ensure all systems are in place. The amnesty will allow motorists to pay outstanding traffic tickets without attracting demerit points and come ahead of the introduction of the revised Road Traffic Act. The updated Road Traffic Act will replace the 1938 law and will establish new road traffic offenses as well as provide increased penalties for current breaches. 
Alicia Noel Murray, the 29-year-old woman convicted in the United States for hiring a hitman to kill her Jamaican husband, has been sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The contracted killer has received a similar sentence. Mrs. Noel Murray and Kirk Porteous, who was 27, were sentenced in the Brooklyn Supreme Court in the United States, state of New York. Prosecutors say Noel Murray wanted to cash in on a $900,000 U.S. dollar insurance payout from three policies for the deceased Omar Murray. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and before we go, more from Portia Simpson Miller in her final address to Parliament as a legislator. My work in Southwest St. Andrew has been aimed at improving the lives of the people. Beyond the physical projects, the people have grown together, built lasting community structures, put aside their differences, and are living together in peace. I would be the first to say we have not achieved everything that we wanted. Every MP knows that the demands outstrip the available resources. I stand here today very proud that Southwest has come a long way from where I found it in 1976. Many of us ask how I did it. My simple answer is I have respected and loved the people and they have rewarded me with loyalty and love.